Welcome to the Smart Play usage tutorial. Smart Play is one of the more complex and powerful features the Zoom player possesses. To begin, we will open the Options dialog and go to the Smart Play section of the Options dialog. As you can see, there are four tabs and you have the Enable Smart Play checkbox and the Auto Configure button. It's vitally important to leave the Smart Play enabled as it increases stability, many files load faster, and it gives you control over which component is used to decode and read different media files. Okay, to begin with, we'll start with the settings and blacklist. This checkbox instructs Zoom Player to allow Windows to try to open the file if Zoom Player can't open uh, the file using the Smart Play technologies. This is a fallback position and it can lead to the player freezing if there's too many badly installed components in the system. Next, you have the Show Smart Play Graph Creation arrow. This is useful if you're trying to play a media file with Smart Play and it keeps failing or dropping back to direct show graph creation. Uh, what happens with this checkbox enabled is that you see arrows describing why the connection didn't work. Use indirect connection is something you usually does, don't use. It allows components to be connected indirectly, which can cause all sorts of weird effects. Better left alone unless you're an expert in trying to experiment with graph creation. The Disable Smart Play for files with the following extensions allow you to disable Smart Play for specific file formats. In this case, the DVB file format, which is used for DVB uh, over the air TV reception by some components. Uh, the prevent the following filters decoder from being used is another, another safety measure which prevents known uh, components which cause stability issues from being used. Next, you have the source filters and splitter. A source filter is the component in charge of opening and reading a media file, and the splitter is takes this written information and splits the file into streams, which can be audio stream, video streams, and subtitle stream, etc. Lastly, you have the audio and video decoder configuration. Here you can have, you can configure which components is used for various audio formats and video formats. For example, for AC3, audio, which is basically Dolby Digital, you can configure and select one of the pre-existing profiles. Right now we have FFD Show Audio Decoder selected. Usually you're not prompted with this advanced dialog. Usually you would see the simple dialog, which just tells you which profile is currently selected and which components or filters are currently used for this format. If you click on a format uh, on a profile that isn't currently available, you will be notified with a message, for example, like this. As you can see, it says this, this profile uses a component which is not registered on the system. This means that it's not installed. We usually list the components the profiles in order of stability, quality, and uh, so you'll see a lot of FFD show because it's very stable and very good quality. After selecting it, we can press OK to apply our selection, or we can show the advanced mode, which allows you to create new profiles, to shift their priority up and down, the priority level is determined when pressing the auto configure button. But when you press this button, Zoom player scans the profile and selects the first profile that is registered, installed on your system. Uh, so you can 
uh, update the selected profile by changing the, the, the components it uses and then selecting it and clicking update. You can create a new profile which is based on this configuration. You can remove the selected profile. You can change the priority, basically moving it down or up in the list. And you can uh, specify uh, a custom render. For audio files, this is the audio render, which can be an audio device. For video files, this is the video renderer, which uses different video display technologies. This overrides the default value specified within the playback section, the video and audio sections. Here you can restrict this profile to only uh, accept or reject uh, connections based on file extensions, which allows you to have different decoders for different file extensions, even though they use the same media format. And this is um, a list of class IDs which help Zoom player identify the various formats. You can add sub, uh, you can add subtypes, you can remove subtypes. And for information about this format, you can press the go button, which will open the browser and explain what this format does. After making our selection, again, we press OK. And you can see that this dialog changes a bit from the, for the video decoder. Right now you can see the video render. You can have different video renderers. And for source filters, you can have, for example, uh, you can see this dialog is a bit different. Here you can see we limiting this format to the AMR extension and we only we using this filter. The difference here, this is something that's unique to this dialog. Yeah, you can have one component which is both a file source and a splitter. So when this is the case, you enable this checkbox. Here you can force subtype which helps uh, choose the decoder. Uh, this is usually when you have uh, badly encoded content which don't identify themselves. And for the source, sorry, for the splitter, you also have a slightly different uh, dialog, which again, you can restrict it to a specific file extension. Um, you can define the media subtypes, etc. I hope you found this tutorial informative. Visit us, please visit us again.